Hey, everybody. Welcome to Game of Thrones. Am my hair okay? Game of Thrones Rewind. The final one. <laughs> That's it, guys. We've been fucking talking about Game of Thrones for a while. <laughs> this is the final fucking episode. Beans is here. Beans decided to show up. Um, she's like, I'm here for the Game of Thrones. She just shows up for, like, the big things, you know. De yeah, here, here she is. Here she is. Uh, and in addition to little Drogon Beans, my mama's little black dragon, uh, we've got Trey, neighbor, Sir Neighbor Trey. Trey's been... Yeah, thank how you, many, Internet, for how, that. How many... Yeah, I know. The, yeah, the Internet dubbed him Sir Neighbor Trey earlier on the Instagram uh, when, we were, when we were talking about this. Uh, so how many seasons have we watched together? Like, it's true. It's not from the beginning, but no. I feel like... I mean, the last, kind like... Of Red Wedding-ish? Yeah, yeah. And then uh, our special, we have special, special guest, Duke Leto. <laughs> he's here. He's my other dragon baby. He's on the other side of the cage. He's, he's my other, he, there he is. Look at, look, at, look at my little man. Look at him. He hates me still. He's a wild man. He'll never not hate us, you know? Like, what up, dude? He, he's, You're not a dragon rider? For... Um, he hasn't been tamed yet, no. This, this one. Mm. He's more accurate to the books. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's been more. You don't have enough Targaryen blood. Yeah. Not yet. To, um, he's he doesn't he doesn't give a fuck. He's crazy. Um, he's a wild lizard. He's a wild lizard. <laughs> this was not a hand raised lizard. <laughs> no, actually, the lizard is. So uh, I uh, I'm a book reader. Mm -hmm. uh, you're a book reader. I am. I've read them all <laughs> at have, least twice. We have read them. I have not read them all at least twice. Uh, but I'm gonna have to read some twice before Winds of Winter comes out. And I plan on. I gotta refresh myself because after watching the show, I'm so like, wait, what the fuck was happening in the book? Right. Because now it's like diverged so far that like I don't even fucking remember what the fuck. You gotta clear the memory. Yeah, I gotta. Like you, I gotta it, clear. You need something to overwrite. Yeah, I gotta clear it the out. The show. Big and um, and I mean, were you reading the books before the the show came out? Yes. Okay. And so I was very excited when I heard about the show. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he's the same way you get excited about a new Dune. Right. You know, right. 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 Totally. Um, you oh, hope that on. they will do a good job with it. But yeah. So okay. So you were reading the books like well before the show came out, and then um, you're sort of super excited on the show. Me too. I was like, oh man. Like I started reading them in college. I was like, fuck, like, I can't believe the show. Like, it's, they're going to make one. HBO is fucking great. You know, they, after they made Rome and all that stuff. Right. Like, yeah. I was like, they're going to be great at this. Like, this could be really cool. And then the first few seasons came out and they were so fucking good. Mm -hmm. So fucking good, you know? And then it picked up steam. Uh, the mainstream audience started jumping on board. People were like, what the fuck is this? This is so awesome. I was super excited to be in a position to share with all these new people about all this stuff. And so on uh, on the YouTube, Comic Book Rolling Team YouTube channel, we made the Epic History series. We did the Lannisters, the Targaryens, the Starks, and the Baratheons. Deep dives. Um, you, you guys really went deep we on the really lore. We were really balls deep. You know, <laughs> like, because in the show, like, a lot, I just know, like, a lot of, like, I know my mom and, like, some other people and stuff were just like, wait, what is this? I don't know. What? Huh? You know, and I was like, hold on. Let me just, you just need the backstory of, like, where all this stuff is. And so being someone who enjoys uh, really complicated, dense fictional universes. You know, I was happy to explain this and guide people through it. And uh, a lot of people found our channel like that. The, those episodes exploded our, you know, our sus uh, subscriptions right. and stuff like that. It was huge. Some of our biggest videos that we've created. Uh, and so, yeah. And so after that, I uh, started doing the Game of Thrones rewind stuff. Being like, hey, this is a thing, you know, let's talk about it. And then as the show progressed, you know, I was like, oh, no, uh, they're running out of book. They're running out of book real fast. <laughs> like they're going so fast through these seasons and they could totally slow down, but they're not slowing down. They seem to be kind of pushing it. And I was just like, Ugh, this is kind of going to be fucked up. And then, uh, and then the show started like once we finally left the station completely and they were, they were off the reservation without a map. Uh, I noticed immediately I sensed, I was like, uh Oh, this is, this is going downhill. And so I started complaining <laughs> and being kind of, right. being very um, critical of it. And uh, the Game of Thrones audience is just some of the worst, most vicious people. <laughs> and like they hate, it was just like, they hated me for it, you know? And I was just like, I, well, I don't know what well, to we, tell we you guys. We were talking about that there is not, there's not one Game of Thrones audience. Yeah. It, there's right. really major divisions. Totally. And I think we, as book readers, we're in one of those divisions and yeah. so we are collectively the haters <laughs> yes the haters. we are the haters we are the, the trolls the haters uh why can't we just have a good time and it's like well because i know why this can't we be better yeah. let's accept the show on its own terms let's, let's just accept this trash you know and i'm like no 
No. So, um, so yeah. So then people started hating on me. Then I like kind of crapped out on doing Game of Thrones rewinds, maybe for a year or yeah, something. Yeah, we skipped one of the seasons. We skipped one was, of the seasons. We just stopped so doing just it. Like fuck this. Like yeah. I don't even remember what I was doing. I was just like, ah, I don't care. This wasn't fun anymore. I just didn't want to. And then, um, yeah. And then I kind of came to a point where like I accepted how shitty it was. You know. Then I came back around. And I was like, okay, I did accept it on its own terms. And then I was like, okay, cool, whatever. This is kind of fucking fan fiction, goofy land. So all right. But then, uh, but God damn it, I got drawn back in. I got drawn back, and I thought I didn't care anymore. You know, I thought I was, like, prepared for this season to be trash. Like, I knew it wasn't going to be great, you know. I was like, I knew it was going to be kind of goofy. Uh, I had a feeling Daenerys, you know, Daenerys was probably going to die, like, some shit, you know, whatever. And then, but then the way it was executed, um, especially, you know, the last, the, the penultimate episode in particular, uh, just, like, I just, like, fucking rip my heart out dude and i was just like i didn't realize i was still this emotionally invested right but i am and i'm hurt <laughs> and i hate this right. we, <laughs> like you we, know we thought we had checked out yeah I, yeah like i can't be surprised by how bad it is right and then they took it to <gasps> another level because we like we are completionists. Like we have to. Right. Like there's right. a show is kind of a tragedy, right. and right. part of the tragedy is like we have to watch this horrible thing that was great. Right. And we cared about, and we yes. were evangelical about saying everybody yeah. come and watch this. Right. And now right. we're the ones Please. that are like, oh, we're so sorry. I'm so sorry. So sorry that we brought everyone oh. here. Oh no, it all went bad so fast. And we do have to and, like we are trying to make sense of it. Yeah. Like right? we have to yeah. parse. Yeah. Like where did it go? so wrong and i think some villains have emerged yeah um yeah. in yeah. our in our story oh. well yeah i mean it was so funny i saw this um i saw this really hilarious okay. meme earlier today where there's this key and peel clip where um uh peels like won the presidency or something he's like congratulating some politicians congratulating all these people and it's like me and how i feel about game of thrones and it's like oh him congr congratulating like hey you're cool like actors what's up you know like george r, r. martin you're so cool like uh costume design you know like lighting like and just like and then at the very end it was you know D and D. And he just skips them and just like doesn't even look at them and just like walks off you know and i was just like yeah that's it's true that's kind of i retweeted that's that on my twitter true. Uh, I thought that was like a really a really great way of, of framing the whole situation where you're just like fuck like this show just has so much awesome shit going for it it's got the budget it's got the talent uh, it's it's got you know the actors the costumes everything the fucking see the dragons look so fucking good like shit those I mean especially in that final episode man I mean those dragons looked fantastic uh, there's some some episodes like hit and miss you know like hit and miss but last episode they didn't fuck around with that one um, and be especially because after this episode, there has to be like there needs to be group commiseration totally about totally. how bad this was and how disappointing it is. Like we yeah. need to make sense of this. It's not just you come away with this. And it's like was it really as bad as I? It really like no, it's worse. It's worse than I thought. It's yeah. It's I I just think that this is like because this is such a big cultural zeitgeist that has become so huge. And it has, like, they have such a big stage and such an opportunity to say something poignant and interesting about humanity. And you they know? were. For and, a while, they were. Yeah, and they were on that track. I mean, they had everything they've been working on, these arcs, these amazing arcs for all of these characters. Yep. And in the final two or three episodes, almost every character has walked back on their arc. None of, like, many of them do not evolve. Uh, walk walk it back's was... even too generous. Like, I think... Unfortunately, you have to come to the conclusion after watching these last episodes that these writers did not understand these characters yeah. at all yeah. or, or have no sense of character. It's, biz it's bizarre. It's bizarre. You know, it's bizarre. Like, it's, uh, and it just, for me, as, a, as somebody who's really passionate about storytelling mm -hmm. uh, and passionate about characters, especially these characters, it's just like, it's just, it is, it is hurtful. It's like, this is such an opportunity to say something cool. You have such an audience and such a moment and just to fumble it so badly and to say such nihilistic, ugly things, you know, that the uh, writers are you talking about what they've actually said now or well, like, like what, like the, like where these arcs end up, you know, and like how everything plays out. It's just like kind of gross. Like it just leaves me feeling kind of empty and yeah, hollow. And the ending is a little gross. It's, it's I'm having gross. a tough time articulating exactly why him Total. murdering her is exactly gross, yeah. but it feels a little bit like it feels a little gross. It's a little fatal attraction. Feels like it's a little bit too happy of the man killing the <sighs> woman. You know, I'm just still processing. We're not all bought of in. It. We're not bought in on that murder, even. You know? No, I'm not. Yeah. You know, not really. Uh, not really. So. I mean, Sir Bland 
took matters into his own hand here. Um, and, and I don't know. Uh, I'm like, I, I'm ha- I am having, tr- I am struggling to articulate why it bothers me. I'm like that lady so in the much. meme looking around at all, with all the algebra and the equations flying around, you know, I'm just like, uh, <sighs> <laughs> I, I feel bad out. i feel bad for the actors because uh-huh. i think they did a good job yeah i uh, i feel worse for these characters uh-huh. who i know are not real people yes but this is like have mighty influence nonetheless these are cultural things that have, we share have a mighty influence in our lives the character of Tyrion is more important than anything i will do in my life right yeah. Like that, yeah. this will have an impact on how people view the world. Is these characters of Arya, yeah. Daenerys, yeah. Tyrion, terribly and we influential. kind of want justice for them. Yeah. That does not mean we want happy endings. No, we want we want endings with meaning. Yeah, meaning. And that meaning, dude. Meaning is the fucking wave, and there was no meaning in this. It was just meaningless, and it was just very unsatisfying. Yeah, we're trying. We're trying to even figure out. Like, we can kind of see kind of... Like, they're not even really trying to say anything. Like, we're in bad fan well, service it's land. so... The messaging is so mixed. It's bizarre. And it really makes sense. They really don't know what the fuck they're trying to say. Because it's like, everything is just like, wait, yeah. what? What? Huh? Like, all their messaging really kind of... So, George R. R. Martin was trying to say something. Yeah. Like, from the beginning... And, and it's not like he's preaching. No. This isn't exactly allegory. Right. Um, but he is explicitly a lot of times talking about power mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like we have a lot of conversations about power yes. and we see a lot of demonstrations yes and about how it, like how it moves how it works what is it the ugliness Who has of it? it even like how evasive how people wield it, it. Can be, yeah how people uh how it blows up people's lives you know how people like misuse it so like that's kind of a core subject mm-hmm. matter here and it's one we still should be examining at the end, right? Yes. Right? We should be right. we should have come to some conclusions here that were not completely undermined by what actually what we actually just saw. Yeah. And a lot of times like okay, so we're going to do this examination of power mm-hmm. through the lens of all these characters. Mm-hmm. And let's, you know, there's a reason why everybody loves these books so much or so many people like not it's not for everybody. Yeah. But at the same time, like you come away from the books and you're like these are incredibly well-written, engaging yeah. characters yeah. that you fall in love with, yeah. even if you hate some of them. And they're so... Like, you may hate Cersei, but you love that character. Right. And then you know why she does what she does. Like, you understand why everyone's doing what they're doing. Like, you may not agree with it. You may not like it. But all we also, of it's yeah, like, we yeah. spend the time. It both comes out in form of action. Mm-hmm. But if you think about, like, all of these different characters whose arcs we just saw completely cheated in the end, <sighs> think back to <laughs> we know... Like, we all have a sense as viewers of why was this person the way they were. Mm -hmm. Like, none of these characters, like, one of the great things about Game of Thrones is we get to meet these fascinating characters that are so different often, Mm -hmm. but they're exceptional. Mm -hmm. Like, this this is a way of bringing together these exceptional characters, and we understand, like, why they're there. We are getting this elite cross-section of the, of these exceptional characters in the world, and there's a story for why they belong on this stage. Mm-hmm. Like nobody is here just randomly. Right. There are no randos. These are these yeah. are exceptional people. Yeah. Um, from our main characters all the way down to Masande. Yeah. You know, like you go to book Masande. She has a. She's incredibly intelligent. Yeah. She can speak all of these languages. Yeah. She's an example of survival of the fittest. Yeah. Gray Worm. An example right. of sort right. of like not born into greatness. Right. A eunuch has mm-hmm. all these things, but still emerges because right. he's exceptional. So we're doing yeah. an examination. Varys. Varys. The, uh, M- uh, Melisandre. I'm just saying you, we can do yeah. this with each of the characters. Yeah. So we kind of have these people that on one end come from nothing mm-hmm. and are examples of this hyper Darwinism. Yeah. Of this brutal world that's going to create... Some people that are just going to outlast survive because there's something like either they're lucky, but yeah. they're, they've emerged from this as exceptional people yes. from their circumstances. Yes. But it's kind of it's very Darwinian, like yeah. about half the characters. And on the other side, we've got these characters of privilege. Mm-hmm. You know, we have nobles. Yeah, like this is the story of nobles and people of great We're houses, born into power, born into it. Mm-hmm. And so we're going to get examples of both of you know people that are born into power who kind of learn how to use it. Accept the mantle in a responsible way. We also have these fantastic examples of 
people that don't deserve the power and are terrible and abused like joffrey <laughs> yeah, joffrey like being yeah you know about pro- right. you know, the poster uh, child you um, know ramsey bolton ramsey bolton yeah. Other examples of kind of well, he's at least well, a was, bastard. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But you you see how these stories go kind of go wrong. Yeah. But we do have like you know most of the characters in Game of Thrones are nobles. They're kind of standard mm-hmm. hero kind of territory of yes. like you you have this great upbringing, so you're capable of doing like you have the opportunity. Yes. So you have these Darwinian people, and you have opportunity, and then you have your truly kind of like ultimate characters of where these things intersect yeah right Mm -hmm. Tyrion may be a child of privilege but Tyrion isn't Tyrion without having suffered yeah like we understand his suffering yeah and he is he is not as exceptional as he is without without growing up in a pit of vipers that is the Lannister family having (laughs) physical limitations without being hated by everyone that he loves by being betrayed by his family being motherless Wait, growing up motherless. Uh, and it would have destroyed a lot of people. Yeah. But it didn't destroy Tyrion. And even stronger. that, we're talking about like, this is, okay, so this is a, an idea of what a character should be. Mm-hmm. But then it takes somebody who's talented enough as a writer, as George R. R. Martin, to actually like pull off the intelligence yeah. of these characters. Because I don't think, unlike the show writers, mm-hmm. who will tell you, Sansa's the smartest person I've ever met, you know. <laughs> The books actually demonstrate like, right. Tyrion is intelligent in ways to, that, that are demonstrable. Yeah. Like they he pull like the writer George R. R. Martin pulls it off that we're like, oh man, that was good. Like, fuck you, dude. Yes. Like there's these moments where like, oh Littlefinger, that was good. Yeah. You know, yeah. Varys. Like, these are fuck. smart people. Like we we understand why like Tywin Lannister is badass. Yeah. Like this is a worthy villain. Right, like he he is a worthy adversary because he's incredibly smart. Mm -hmm. Um, So this is like this is a commitment to character. This is a commitment like he's good enough writer to pull off intelligence. And unfortunately, like the show writers either just didn't understand it or just weren't up to the challenge. It's it's a lot of things. Yeah, it's it's a they don't have the time. You know, nobody wants to really take the time because mm-hmm. it takes a lot of time. Because it takes everyone's like, oh, George R. R. Martin, I wish you'd finish up and write the fucking book. But it's like there's a reason they're so good is because it just takes time. It takes time to make something that fucking dense. You know, there's no way around it. There's no way around it. And uh, and so he puts the time in and he produces something that's fucking gold. You know, it's just like it's great. Uh, so there's the time factor. But there's also, yeah, I mean, it's like George R. R. Martin is also a genius he is an example of, <laughs> in a like, sense, like though he's an example of the character thing that I was just talking about. Though. Right. Like, he's and not. It, he's not nobly born. He right. has a lot more in common with Tyrion. But he's an exceptional. He's an exceptional talent, talent. who's kind of suffered. Yeah. And he's worked hard. Yeah. You know, like your little triangle there. Right. Like totally. He, in the books, he was able to do all the things. Yeah. The yeah. show right. can do two out of three. Two out of three. Right. The books were able to do. Yeah. Um, all three yeah. all three and I, so i think my like i was just thinking about the last episode like we've been mourning f- for a number of seasons now mm-hmm. but the last episode like each one of these is kind of gotten worse <laughs> and i'm just trying to make sense of it yeah. and i think um the the real sadness that comes away for me and it's not a good sadness like there's plenty of times you see oh, yeah. something and no. you're like you're I, oh that crushed oh, me the totally. red wedding crushed me yeah. or you know ned dying crushed me but i'm completely bought in yeah like it 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 totally works I think the the main just trying to articulate like what's so wrong with where we are in the series is that I have no idea who these people are anymore. Yeah, who the fuck who, are these people? This who is the not fuck? Tyrion. This isn't Tyrion. This isn't Jamie. This isn't Brian. This isn't Arya. What the fuck? Like who? What? This isn't Danny. This it, isn't Danny. What the fuck? This isn't Varys. Like this is. It was just like. There's no consistency. I mean, like, if, if you were trying to, dest- it would be hard if you were trying to destroy these characters yeah. to do a better Fuck. job um, than they did. And so that's, I think, like, we're grasping for meaning yeah. because there's no there's no character to latch onto. Like, we're adrift at sea right. without the... <laughs> Much like Arya will the, be in the middle. Yeah. She's going to go starve and, and, and dehydrate or, you know, in the, in the middle of the ocean when, there's the fine, when they find nothing. They're just going to starve to death or or not having water and and die of thirst, maybe, you know, exposure. 